Hi and salus to everyone joining us today on Brand Talk, a show to help you develop and grow your brand in a more authentic and sustainable way, locally and globally. Whether it is about your personal brand or company brand, your product or service level brand. You learn from thought leaders from different parts of the world, from CEOs, business owners, managers, experts who tell their brand stories and share their valuable first-hand insights. My name is Brigitte Bajkowski. Everyone calls me Bridget. I'm the founder and owner of Bridget Brands, a branding strategy boutique. I help my clients craft meaningful strategies that effectively elevate their brands to unleash their full potential to shine. Let's get started and dive with me into the world of brands. I'm excited to have Mindy Rosser as my guest today. Mindy is a social selling strategist, expert on everything LinkedIn. I'm so happy to bring her onto this show, an unstoppable and passionate woman who knows exactly how to create an exceptional and compelling LinkedIn profile to make your brain shine. I truly believe that a strong LinkedIn profile is essential to build an authentic brand and ultimately your business successfully online. LinkedIn is a must for most of the businesses nowadays as it has become such a powerful social media business platform. You do not want to miss out the chance to show yourself on this platform in your best version to the world. And Mindy definitely can help you to achieve that. Let me tell you a little bit about Mindy. Mindy is a social selling strategist who helps innovators use LinkedIn to grow their business, manage effective business development programs, and build strategic sales pipelines. As a LinkedIn coach, social strategist, social selling consultant, Mindy is on a mission to educate and elevate how professionals use LinkedIn for business. She's collaborating one-on-one -on -one with dozens of consultants, subject matter experts, business leaders, business owners, entrepreneurs, and influencers. Mindy specializes in helping professionals learn how to use LinkedIn for their businesses, to fill their sales pipelines, to build a meaningful personal brand, and grow their businesses without ever spamming for leads using complex automation. I warmly welcome Mindy Rosser. Welcome to Brands Talk. So excited to be here, Bridget. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you as my guest today, Mindy. How have we connected, huh? Um, that is like the story, like who who reached out first to get connected? I don't exactly who? remember. Do you? Me neither. <laughs> so it's all about learning how to, yeah create an online course right and how to sell it and that's how we got to know each other in a kind of alumni membership community and that's why that's how we connected right yes yeah. yes it's an awesome group <laughs> yeah awesome i'm so glad we did and we go a journey together yeah so before we uh, go all about LinkedIn, Mindy, could you tell us a little bit about your background, about your personal journey that brought you right there where you are now? Yeah, so if, if you can't tell, like I live in Hawaii, so if you see like surfboard, mango trees, chickens, <laughs> roosters going off in the background. Um, yeah, so... Basically, I didn't start here though. So how I got started, I was in more of like the startup realm. I was working on like content marketing, social media marketing, and that kind of led back to LinkedIn in a funny sort of way um, because I really enjoyed the B2B side. So business to business aspect. Um, I was doing a little bit of like business to consumer and that just didn't really grab me the same way that uh, the business to business did. And that kind of pushed me into LinkedIn. I started working with a number of people to help them with their LinkedIn profiles, just colleagues at work. Um, other people were coming to me, oh, I heard that you do LinkedIn profiles. I And so that kind of just pulled me in in that direction. And then I started working with some amazing consultants who also specialized in LinkedIn business development. So that kind of took it another direction where I'm like, oh, 
LinkedIn is not just for resumes or profiles or helping my friends get other jobs. You can actually build these like amazing business relationships with other professionals, um, whether you're looking to get more leads, whether you're looking to just collaborate partnerships. And so that kind of pulled me into that realm. So it's kind of a blend. I ended up in a blend of like the marketing side of LinkedIn and then the business development side and really helping people build those solid relationships without the spam. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. So let's go back in time a little bit, about 11 years. So you left your safety net, became your own boss in 2010 with Mindy Ross, your marketing. You shifted from being an employee uh, a, um, or a corporate, let's say it like that, into entrepreneurship. So what made you leave the safety net? On this, what made you do this courageous step to becoming your own boss? So what was your vision? That's a good question because I felt like I was doing my own thing, like with Mindy Ross and marketing. I was like doing that on the side, like on the down low for some years while I was technically still having a day job. And it was really tricky, I think, to kind of manage both. And I felt this pull. I think it's just the personality that I have. I, I really don't like being told what to do. So that's probably part of it. You know, I like to set my own schedule and I would request things or want to move initiatives forward at work. I'm like, I think this could really make a business impact. And I wasn't able to do that. So I felt like I had like these handcuffs um, and that it was the things that I was really passionate about. Um, it either wasn't a priority for the business, for the corporate business. And for me, I'm like, but this could actually make a huge impact. So I think there was just a mismatch of just the the objectives that I had in my day job and then what I really wanted to accomplish and how I really wanted to help people outside of the day job. And so that was stronger. That pull was stronger. And my personality, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Like everybody is like, we all make jokes about like, let's see how long you last in this job. You know, like it, the jobs are kind of a stepping stone to kind of like explore our entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, so it was just, it's in my blood. And once I started getting some paying clients, um, once I kind of got through like those first couple of years where you're like, you know, doing stuff for very, very cheap, um, then I really started enjoying it because I was actually able to like hone my craft in a way that I wasn't able to do in my day job. I was able to focus on the aspects that excited me and got me interested in the work that I did. And so it just was, it was too compelling, I think. So I'm like, okay, bye-bye day job. I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your vision that drove you and the purpose, your big why? What is it that, that, um, yeah, that you are living, that you are striving for? I think right now it's really helping people in whatever way, shape or form that that takes. Cause I feel like it shifted over time, but it's, I really want to help people live like their fullest life and live up to their fullest potential and create a lifestyle that fits. Um, and so for me, like it was as dramatic as moving from like the mainland US, Chicago land area, really mm -hmm. urban um, to this area where I'm like on the North shore of Oahu in the country, you know, surfing every day or twice a day, you know, so it was a really radical shift um, for me, but that was, it was a journey and it was a process and it had to start somewhere. And I think each step that I took, you know, towards that, you know, living out that mission, like, okay, helping, First, I feel like I had to help myself create the lifestyle that I imagined. And then it's like, okay, now how can I help others? And what does that look like? You know, it's not, for me, it's not being a life coach in that aspect. It's really helping people with their LinkedIn. Because if you have a powerful LinkedIn profile, if you feel that you can build your business on LinkedIn, then that gives you that lifestyle freedom that you're looking for. Um, so I think everybody's different um, in what their lifestyle and ideal vision is going to look like. But I think it's finding what is going to work for you and seeing it. Like I think seeing other people model the lifestyle that you want, like looking for people <laughs> and saying, oh, I want that lifestyle. Okay. How did they get that? And kind of reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So who is exactly your, your customer? Who are you serving? Who is your ideal customer avatar? And what, what are, yes. What, what are the pain points they have? And, and, um, how do you turn them around into this so-called gain points? What is the benefit they walk away or what is the transition that you're helping with? Yeah, so I like to think of the, uh, my, I guess, my avatar as those 
people that are experts in their niche and their field and their industry and they feel like they're the best kept secret like when they're like you know if people just only knew and you know i'm like okay you're the best kept secret and helping them to become that sought after visible expert in their field so i think there's a transformation in that process like okay how do we go from you know, okay, you're the best kept secret to people actually know who you are. They're attracted to you. You are feeling authentic, I think, in how you're promoting your personal brand and how you're living out your vision at work and with your clients. So I feel like that's the transformation that I'm after and using LinkedIn as the tool to help them. Mm. Okay. So before we dive deeper into that, I would like to know what is the brand? story behind mini roster marketing <laughs> is there a story <laughs> really like this really glamorous story i think it was when when i was sitting down to think about like what should i call it um i had we had all like jason is my husband and he is like this ultimate creative like we threw around a lot of ideas and the one that stuck was like, we, you know what? We should just call it your name, like Mindy Roster Marketing. And then there's like a little acronym MRM. I'm like, okay, that's easy to remember and thinking in terms of logos and brand colors and brand style. And then for me, I have tried a couple of others. Like I was Mindy Zone for a while um, and that was fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's like, I think there's something special about having your name because there's that stamp of like, okay, like for, like yours, Bridget Brands, like, okay, people associate you with that brand. And for me, it's like, I'm so core, I think, to the center of the brand, um, that calling it something else, people may get confused. And I wanted to eliminate any confusion and just like, it, it may be a little bit boring, but everybody knows who it is and what it stands for. So no, nah, nothing too crazy. <laughs> so Mindy, um, in addition to your consulting that you do, you have also started now your online courses and mm -hmm. um, my question is now why did you start these courses um, what was your intention to do so and then you also have your own LinkedIn live show that is Mondays with Mindy so please tell us everything about it <laughs> Oh, yeah. So the courses, that is something that's been in the back of my mind for like the past few years. So I've been thinking about it. Um, some of my colleagues, they were telling me, you know, Mindy, if you could just train people to do what you do, you know how helpful that would be to a lot of businesses. So I kind of started with just training VAs. So like my, my original course model was really just to help VAs who are working with my clients or potential clients. Um, so they would have trained VAs that could you know, do the work that I do with the outreach and the messaging and helping their clients. Um, so that has shifted. I really wanted to impact more people on a direct level. And people keep coming to me and getting referred for LinkedIn profiles. That's like one of the biggest things that I get asked about. And I kept ignoring it because I hated it. I'm like, I don't want to write any more profiles. You know, I'm <laughs> good. And, you know, I don't want to do any more. But there was something about it in the way that I could help people with th those words in the profile portion. Um, people kept coming back and saying, Mindy, this is something you have to teach. If you could just teach people how to do their own LinkedIn profiles, first of all, you wouldn't have to do it anymore. So you wouldn't have to write all of these profiles. And then you are also empowering them with a skill that they can use for the rest of their career anytime they're making a career pivot. So that got me thinking, um, and my husband was instrumental in this as well. <laughs> he kept saying, Mindy, you got to do something about the LinkedIn profiles. He's like, that is what you're really good at. If you're looking at what you're really, really good at, that's it. Um, and so that's what I focus on. And it was it was tricky trying to figure out how to teach that, because how do you teach writing? Um, so there was there was a lot of like, I think, thrashing and trying to figure out, OK, how do I make this simple for people? And that's where my latest course, the LinkedIn Accelerator, evolved from was, OK, let's help people get their LinkedIn profiles dialed in once and for all, and then they can make subtle tweaks later on and then start growing their network. So helping people more at the beginning of their LinkedIn journey, or, you know, especially during that pivot phase where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm shifting. I'm not exactly sure what to do. I'm looking for another job. I'm looking for, you know, my dream business to build that. And I can do that on LinkedIn, but I don't know where to start. So that's where that kind of came from. And that I think settling in on that program and really focusing on it has been 
very powerful for me, I think, as an individual. And just the number of people I'm now able to help, I think that's the big thing. It's just like being able to work with people in like a small group setting um, and it's just a different vibe than what I've been doing for years, which is more of that one-on-one -on -one consulting. And I feel like it's even more powerful having that small community all focused on the same goal. And it's short enough where people can, you know, go through the program and like, okay, I'm done. You know, there is a finish date. It's not like this per in perpetuity, like you're forever hanging around. Uh, so I feel like there's some, there's, there's a lot of fun to it as well. And the, the small group aspect, um, for my Mondays with Mindy show, um, that kind of stemmed from wanting to share. And I thought about doing a podcast and I thought about doing a bunch of like just typical YouTube videos, which I've done in the past, but I was really looking for a way to connect with people on a deeper level and kind of share with them live. And I think there's something special, like what we're doing here with the, the live feel, even if people watch the recording, yeah. there's a different feel. Yeah. It's like, even if you're watching the recording, there's a different feel that you get from like, oh, watching people live versus like an overly edited, produced show. And they're both valuable, but I think it's just another way that we can connect with our audiences and our IC. And for me and knowing who my people are, it's like, that's what they're looking for. And I started getting feedback and I'm like, okay, this is good. I'm doing the right thing. Don't change it. Just keep going with it and have fun. Yeah. It's also my second live show. Usually I was just on a podcast. But it's yeah. so fun. I don't know. It has a different vibe coming along with. So I really enjoy it. And I also did your uh, LinkedIn Accelerator course. I loved it. So it was one week. And not only for beginners on LinkedIn. I have been on LinkedIn for so long, especially at the beginning, um, to connect with my academic peers. And <laughs> Um, yeah, so you, you just grow with the whole thing, but you do not pay so much attention to all the detail because you have been using it for so long. So it was a way for me to kind of refresh and see what's what's new, what are the tools, you know, and sometimes I like to be taught. I like to just follow mm -hmm. them and there's someone who helps me along the way. And, you know, it's one week, it's easy, easy peasy, easy going, you do your homework. And um, it was really exciting, and I learned so much, so now so much that is kind of beneath the surface, and and you have a better understanding because I do not have the time to take the time myself to I do the research, but I'm not going that deep. It's not a right. priority. So doing that in a one week, it's it's really fantastic because then you have it. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a door opener and. Um, yes just on a different level and it, it's so much more fun now to engage because you know what is behind the scenes and, and what's going on when you do this at a certain time and and and, and the word mm -hmm. and so on so that's really important i really loved your course <laughs> oh, good so uh mindy you as a social selling strategist and also uh, an online course creator mm -hmm. You are a thought leader yeah, and an influencer in your sphere, a pretty big sphere. So you also built your own shining personal brand. Let's go deeper into personal brand. Speaking of building personal brand, this is one way of engaging with people who often become valuable connections and customers. Um, so that is through your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that LinkedIn profile becomes really crucial. And that mm -hmm. can also uh, come across as uh, who you are. So what makes mm -hmm. the best authentic brand, especially on LinkedIn? What can we do in order to, to show our authentic self? That's a really good question because I feel like um, when it comes to other channels like Instagram or Facebook, it's like, oh, that's easy. I just kind of show pictures of my family or my dog or my pets or my <laughs> lifestyle. You know, and it's like it's such a visual platform that it feels a little easier to showcase a personal brand there. So when people come to LinkedIn, they're like, oh. I have no idea where to start. So that's a lot of the, the questions that I get are like, 
Well, I don't want to be too personal. I probably shouldn't be posting pictures of my kids every day on LinkedIn because we are coming to LinkedIn with like a professional mindset. So I think it's first of all, realizing that LinkedIn is kind of like the professional water cooler. When you're coming here, you are, you know, you're dressed up or whatever dressy is for you. I'm more casual in nature and that's just the way I do business, but it should be your professional self showing up to LinkedIn versus like your casual self. Now, part of that is also showing a little bit of our personal selves because we aren't like career robots or business robots. Uh, we are still very human. Uh, so there's a blend that has to happen here. But first of all, you just think of like, okay, what is my professional persona? What is my professional hat? I'm leading with that. And then kind of filling in the pieces and like letting people know a little bit about your personal life as well, I think is good. The best place to start with that is your LinkedIn headline. So if you're looking at LinkedIn, like, okay, I know I need to do the whole profile, yes, but where do I start? It's like, okay, your headline. It's that one section that's right under your name. It follows you everywhere on LinkedIn. So you really wanna pay close attention to what is here. Um, you have 220 characters to work with. Um, and the formula that I like to teach for this section is who you are plus who you help plus how you help them and then the results that you generate. So those are like four things. You can watch this later and I can put resources in the comments if you need them. Um, but this is a really powerful formula that once you get this dialed in, you're going to feel much more confident. And I think on LinkedIn, confidence matters a lot, especially if you're going to be reaching out to people using your LinkedIn profile, if you're going to want to build connections, if you're going to want to invite podcast guests to your show, um, explore partnerships with people, explore collaborations and projects. All of that starts with your headline because that's the first thing people see, especially if they don't know you. They see your name and they're like, okay, well, who is this person? And they're gonna see your headshot and then they're going to see that headline. So really paying attention to that headline is going to be key, I think, to setting the stage for your personal brand. And then the rest of your profile kind of does fall into place after you get that headline, because that headline kind of sets the tone for what comes next. So what should you put in your about section? Well, make sure it maps back to what is in the headline. Mm -hmm. um, what should you put as that header image behind your headshot? Well, what is in your headline? Make sure that it somewhat matches so people aren't saying, wait a second, you say you're in marketing and branding and there's like a picture of you like on the golf course or something. You know, make sure that everything feels cohesive because when people land on your profile, they're going to do just a quick visual scan. Most people are not going to read line by line by line by line unless they're a headhunter or somebody's, you know, wanting to poach you for a job or something like that. Most people aren't going to read that deeply, but they are going to scan it. And so when, as they're scanning it, just think, okay, what is the impression that they're getting of me, of my, my personal brand, of the type of work that I do, the type of people that I can help. And the easier, easier that you can make that for people, the better. Mm -hmm. So that's your job. Like I think as, as uh, we are all in charge of our personal brands and as the, the keeper of the personal brand is making sure that it looks good and is very clear and people understand who we are, whom we help, how we help them, and the results that we do generate for clients. So those are like some beginning tips for like the LinkedIn profile. And I, I think more about how to think about your profile. It is not like a resume. Um, and I think a lot of us think, oh, this is just like my online resume. No, it is not. It is your personal brand. It is the, like the start of your personal brand. All of the elements that are there get used elsewhere, but it is the start and it is the place where you begin building out your personal brand on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So recently, um, I Monday, you had uh, a Mindy's live. It was about growing your network. There's a lot of people, you called it the obsession of growing your network. Please, what's your stance on that? Oh, that is such a good question. Yes, because it's another good question I get asked a lot, like, Mindy, how big should my network be? You know, it's not big enough. You know, it's like we are like obsessed, I think, in our culture with like, how many followers do you have? I mean, it's even worse. On Instagram is even worse. Um, but it's just like this obsession that the, the more connections that we have, the more important we are, the more we're seen as a thought leader, um, the more clout we have. And there's like this false sense of bravado. I think that comes with, well, I have 50,000 connections and well, you can't have that many connections, that many connections and followers, you know, so my following is this big. And, but the question I like to ask people is, 
Do you actually have relationships with all of those people? Like how many of those people do you actually know? Do you actually DM? Do you actually have a working relationship with? Are you keeping up with these people? Are they helping you grow your business? Are you helping them grow their business? How are you supporting these people? Most of us cannot work with 50,000 people. <laughs> you know, and most of us don't need, I think that's the question. It's like, do you need 50,000 followers to have a successful six or seven figure business? Probably not. No. Like I know a lot of my clients, they have like a thousand and they're running six and seven figure businesses, very happy with their numbers. They don't need a ton of followers and people in their network to make that happen. They have the right people. So it's more a focus on like the quality. We've heard it before, the quality over the quantity. But sometimes we do need to be reminded of that because we get so focused on seeing those numbers go up. And I know some of my clients, I, I have one in particular who is, is like on the thought leader route. And it's like when those numbers go down, like, oh, I didn't have enough profile views this week. It's like, what's going on? It's like, you know, sometimes there is a little bit of a cycle to it. And there is this sense of obsession with those numbers. And I, I like to shift the focus from, okay, how many of these people are we engaging? Like who, like, even if it's just like a half dozen people, do we need to build relationships with that will actually help you propel the business forward? Because that's what we should be doing on LinkedIn. It's not just about getting a bunch of likes or just racking up followers. It is really about those connections and going deeper with the people inside of our networks, the people who actually matter. Yeah. And I think a lot of people when they're obsessed with growing their network, forget behind all these connections are human beings, human beings that need to be, you know, we need to interact on a visceral level. It's, it's the emotions that um, we establish or the connections, the emotional connections we establish with each other. And then the trust comes in and then it's, it's the time where we can build a, bi a business together. Right. So it's, it's, it's then when we have, um, yeah, when we are having each hours back, um, to do business and we know that through this connection, um, we can grow. Right. And it's, it's really being thoughtful. I think a lot of us, um, are not that thoughtful about who we accept connections from or who we send connections to. And we're like, well, let's just find the people that are gonna say yes and try to get as many as possible. Um, and I think the key is really getting strategic with targeting the exact people who you know could be helpful to your business and you could be helpful to theirs. Um, and even if you're only sending a few connections per week, but these are people that you really care about and that you're actually getting into your DMs. Like I spend a good amount of time in my LinkedIn DMs. You know, it's not just about posting. Like I spend a lot more time in my messages than I ever do elsewhere on LinkedIn. Um, and I feel like that's where we need to start. And it's the part that nobody sees but you. Um, so you have to pay attention to that. You know, that is, you can't outsource you, your messages to other people. You can't outsource that human communication. I've seen people do it, but it is just not the best strategy. Uh, you should really be communicating with people one-on-one, -on -one, especially once it gets to a certain point. Like maybe you do have an assistant who's helping you send like some, some, some connections. Um, but I think once the conversation takes off, you better jump in because yeah. otherwise that's not going to be you. Yeah. Yeah. Because people feel that they feel it. They do. They do. They know if it's templated. They know if it's like cookie cutter. And I roll my eyes whenever I get them. I'm like, oh, maybe this person is interesting. And then you're you're like on the receiving end of like an automated slew of messages like every six hours. And you're like, oh, come on. You could you could have done better than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Is there anything else, any other LinkedIn don'ts we shall keep in mind? Um, I think another like LinkedIn don't is um, do or don't would just be like how much you're posting on LinkedIn. I think a lot of us feel um, this pressure that we have to post all the time, every day. We have to spend a ton of time in our newsfeed for LinkedIn to be valuable for us to show up for our connections. But I think it's just being mindful of what you actually do comment on and what you actually do engage with because LinkedIn does pay attention to that in the algorithm. And so the more that you pay attention to things that matter to you and to your business, so not just you personally, I think this is where we can often get distracted on LinkedIn. Like if we see somebody doing something cool, but it is not related to our business and we continue to like that, then LinkedIn is gonna put more of that 
into our feed. And so we're going to wonder why we're not seeing topics that we could actually provide our expertise on um, or engage with that would be more aligned with our personal brand on LinkedIn. So really be thoughtful, I think, about what you're commenting on, um, because if you want to be showcasing your expertise and commenting on topics and you want LinkedIn to feed you those, you have to train the algorithm to feed those to you. So that is something I want to like caution people about, like just because it's your friend and you, yeah, yes, like those things too, but make sure you're liking a lot of things related to your expertise. Um, so LinkedIn's algorithm will know to give you more of those. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> That's great advice. Thank you so much, me. Um, also, when you are building your own business, um, yeah, there is sometimes roadblocks ahead and then setbacks. And uh, actually, there are good major learning away from it. And they also, these this, this detours are significant um, for us, if we understand, um, that shape us, yeah, that shape us going forward. So is there anything that was so significant for you that you say, ah, oh, actually in hindsight, it was good that it happened because it made me what I am today or, or it was part yeah. of what happened that made me today? That is a really good question and something actually did happen this year that was very pivotal for my business and was very, very difficult. Um, I won't give, go into too many details, but just a, a business partnership that I did have um, for many, many years, it ended. And it ended in a way that was, you know, that I wish would have been a little bit different where we could have, you know, parted on better terms and stuff. But sometimes things just happen. But it actually was one of the best things for me. And the timing of it worked out quite well, I think, with pivoting my business into more of the courses and the programs that I wanted to develop. So like this one part of me was very, very saddened, I think, by just the way that it ended. And then the other part, just the doors and the op opportunities that it opened. It's like I enjoy coming to work in just the most beautiful way on a consistent basis. And I was struggling with that, I think, as part of that partnership before, just bringing my best self to work and to what I do. So I think be mindful. I think my lesson from that was really be mindful of the people that you do decide to go into business with. And as those partnerships change, as they evolve, I think pay attention to the nuances of, you know, the subtle shifts here and there. And is that feeling good? And listen to your gut, I think, on those things, because it's really, really important. The people you surround yourself with on a daily basis, even if it's virtual, like I think, oh, well, it's, it's just virtual. It's just some Zoom calls it matters. Like those people on those Zoom calls, those are individuals too. Just like we talked about on LinkedIn, your connections, those are all real people. Um, so you are having real experiences with people and you are surrounding yourselves with their ideologies, with their, with their methods, with how they do business. And after making that break, earlier this year, it's like, I have made so many, like you, Bridget, you're one of my, you know, in my, my business buddies. It's like, I've made so many good connections with other people that are much more aligned I think with where my business is going now. And it wasn't to say that that was, you know, a bad par partnership per se. It was just not the direction that I was going. And so there was like this misalignment on the inside of me where it was like, okay, this is just not quite aligned with where I want to take my business and my career moving forward. And so I think paying attention to that and then, you know, expressing the sadness, you're going to feel that sadness when things happen or when things end, but then embrace the possibility, I think, of the future and go gung ho. Like, just say, okay, this is my opportunity to really explore these things I've never explored before. And yes, it is really scary. Yes, it is unpredictable. But I think when you take that mindset, it's all about the mindset, you take that positive mindset into the future. It's amazing how your business will shift, how your career will shift, and how you, I think, internally will shift. Like I noticed like even my personality and the things that I felt on the inside shifted in a beautiful way. So I think be open to that possibility. Yeah, sometimes we cannot let go, even though we know yes. it's not with us, but we keep on, keep on and uh, it, it makes us sad. It, it makes us, you know, desperate. And then once we let go, we are free to embrace and receive something else that is good for us, that is good for us in the moment and, yeah, accompanies us going forward in the future. Yeah, we don't know for how yep. long but it is the right thing, whatever comes in for you at the, at the moment, that's what you need. So you cannot be open to, to receive and embrace if you're still holding on to something um, that is not good for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. And that, that went on for too long. Yeah. And I was thinking about that too. It's just like, that's so important. You do have to do that, let go process to yeah. let the good come in. Yeah. Yeah. And let go in gratitude mm -hmm. and say, thank you. Yeah. Now it's time to depart, right? Yeah. yeah. To start something else, something new. Oh, okay. so I would like to have one more advice mm -hmm. from you since you shifted also into solopreneurship, having your own business, you have had your own business now for 11 years. Are there any, any, um, e-branding essentials that you think are so important mm -hmm. that you need to share with our audience? Mm -hmm from your perspective, especially online. Branding essentials. I think one of the things that we tend to um, overlook is really bringing in, I think our personal selves and what we do outside of like just our specialties into our work, but in a way that feels natural. Cause I feel like some people will go to the extreme and it's like, okay, wait a second, you're a marketer, but all I see are pictures of your kids or your dog, you know? So I think it's really finding a happy blend of these things, but it is something that is really important, I think, to do from the get-go because we do not, especially as personal brands, we are not global brands. As you know, we're like global brands, they have a very different feel to them. Um, as personal brands, people want to see the person. That's why person is in personal brand. Like they want to see us as a whole individual, as a human. And so when we are thoughtful, I think be thoughtful about how you share those other sides of yourself like what types of you know exercise do you like to do what types of activities um you know what are your passions your hobbies when you bring those into your personal brand in a way that makes people feel connected to you or just like intrigued like a lot of people are like i've never surfed but i think surfing is really interesting you know so i think that aspect makes you know my personal brand it's an example of something that is like okay they may not understand from having done it but it makes it interesting. It's like, oh, are you going surfing today? And it gives people a good talking point. So I think, think about the talking points. Like people can have like these icebreaker conversations with you um, and make it easy for them. So I think bringing in that personal element is really important. Um, I think a lot of people focus too much on like, oh, I've got to spend like, you know, $10,000 on a website and a designer and I need logos and all of this. Those are beautiful things to have. And if you can get them done, do them. Because I do feel like they do bring your brand together, but you don't have to start there. I think if you focus on starting on LinkedIn, so use LinkedIn, you know, before you start your website, before you do all these other things, start with LinkedIn, start with your profile. Feel, get that feeling good dialed in. Expand a little bit to your other social channels if you're using them. And then I think then focus on like the website and the about page and all of that other stuff. But sometimes we get so lost in the website and we spend six months, a year goes by building out all of the stuff related to our brand and we never actually start doing business. Like when you start doing business and getting clients, that's going to inform what your personal brand is. So focus on like, I, I would say the bare essentials, which would be LinkedIn. Get your personal brand dialed in there. Um, start getting some clients, start getting you working on your programs, whatever that is. And that's going to inform what your personal brand becomes elsewhere. So mm -hmm. those would be my words of advice. I see so many people get stuck. I think at the beginning, like, well, I have to build my website first. And that takes people like six months, you know, to get done. And then they feel frustrated and they don't have any income coming in. So focus on those other elements first. Absolutely. And I love that. And you're doing a, an especially good job um, with that because... You came up with a mango concept, right? <laughs> Please let us know what is your mango concept. <laughs> mango effect. Oh, I'd love to talk about this. Mango effect. <laughs> mango effect. Um, so we have this mango tree, which is definitely a part of the personal brand now. Um, and I, I love mangoes are like my favorite fruit. So mm -hmm. first of all, that's something that... The, the, yours too, um, that we had going for us moving into this place. It was like, oh, mangoes. And mango trees, they don't typically give mangoes every year. So when you do get a harvest though, they come like a ton of them. So we've got like hundreds, probably a couple thousand mangoes between the two trees that we have that are coming down. Um, but I think the mango effect for me is just how you do LinkedIn. Like to me, I think of when I think of mangoes, I think of my LinkedIn network. And there's this big, beautiful tree and it's taken a lot of time to build. Um, but once it comes to fruition, once, you know, the, the leaves or the prospects, um, the mangoes start dropping, it's, it's bountiful and it's plentiful and you have so much that you can share it with other people in your world, in your space. Um, you can help other people. And so I think everyone should grow their own mango tree and like start on LinkedIn and start growing that mango tree. Um, and you may have to wait a little bit 
but not as long as like 10 years for a mango tree. Um, but you'll have to wait a little bit, but I think it's nurturing that, giving it sunlight, giving it water, you know, all of the wonderful things that we need to um, really think about when we are building our networks because the humans, I think of like the mangoes is like, all of these people, all of these lives that we have the ability to touch and effect in a beautiful way. And it's up to us to make sure that they're cared for. I love that metaphor. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, are there any new projects in the pipeline you want to share with us today? Um, I do have the LinkedIn Accelerator that you just went through earlier this year. Um, the next one of those cohorts is kicking off in the end of October. Um, so I can put a link or Bridget can put a link to um, the wait list if you want to get on the wait list for that. That'll be happening soon. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I also do Mondays with Mindy. So if you are like just curious like about, okay, what does Mindy talk about or any LinkedIn stuff, um, you can also submit questions. I love to answer questions and use them as topics for the show as well. So I think those are the exciting things I have in the pipeline right now. Yes, we are going to put that into the comments and everyone has access to it later on after the show, right? Okay, well, yes. good, Mindy, before we come to the end of this show today, I would like to do a quick word wrap with you. Are you ready for short enough? Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Women. What comes to mind? Strong. Powerful. Yeah. LinkedIn. Uh, fun. <laughs> and a little bit crazy and chaotic sometimes. <laughs> Hawaii. Hawaii. Surfing, for sure. <laughs> Social selling. Social selling. Um, I think of relationships and connection. Okay. Empowering. Empowering. Um, personal brand. I think that's like what's coming to mind for me right now. It's just like how empowering that is. Maybe a weird answer, but. Yeah, but true. And brains. Um, let's see. With that one. I'm drawing a blank on this one. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> all right <laughs> absolutely they are <laughs> all right then Mindy for listeners who would like to find out more about you uh, like website or anything else uh, where can they find you and get in touch with you other than LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn is great um, you can also check out my website which is just my name MindyRosser.com um, I'm on Instagram if you like Hawaii stuff and surfing that's like my fun channel um, and then, yeah, I think just getting on the wait, the wait list if you're interested in any programs or ex the accelerator. Okay, wonderful. So Mindy, thank you so much for being my guest today on Brent's Talk. It was a pleasure having you here and sharing your wisdom of how to accelerate your personal brand using LinkedIn. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right then. So um, thanks to all for joining Brands Talk today. I am always welcoming your precious feedback. Please leave your comments or drop me an email. You can also listen to the show as a podcast on your go. Just follow Brands Talk on your favorite platform. If you are interested in learning more about my brand, head over to my website, bridgetbrands.com or my personal branding course, which is also starting soon see the link to get further information and join the waiting list. It's going to be in the comments. I hope you will join me again when we dive into the world of brands. Yeah, life or having me in your earpods walking to talk. Servus and let's shine. You deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>